Good evening. My name is Dr. Gifford Howarth, percussion professor here at Bloomsburg University, and welcome to our winter holiday concert for 2022. No, I'm kidding. What is up with this weather, I tell you. So this is our spring 22 concert. Um, we've got a collection of pieces here for you. A lot of them we are calling contemporary, meaning they've been, they've been written rather recently. Most of the program's been, you know, the, the pieces have been composed within the last 10, 15 years easily. Um, plus we have a couple of, uh, just to mix it up a little bit, a couple of, of older pieces. That first uh, quintet you heard utilized some different textures um, utilizing the, the drums themselves, the rim of some of the drums, and the wood blocks, kind of mixing it up um, a little bit for you. This next piece, Bubblegum, which was written back in uh, 2020, um, we've been thinking of this one, we've been calling this our happy music for the concert. So it's very uplifting, kind of has a cool groove to it. Um, I'm having some of the performers kind of do like a little embedded improvisation during the piece, um, meaning they're gonna kind of make it up as they go a little bit, but, but for the most part, it's, it's very groove oriented. Um, Josh Gottry is one of these composers and it's, it's mind boggling how much he writes. So we, we play pretty much one of his songs almost ev at every concert. So this is Josh Gottry's Bubblegum.
Okay. Um, so what we have here, the members make up, we have, we have music majors, music minors, and then one of the, the neat aspects of this group, and I'm just checking the uh, height of this instrument here, is we have um, a collection of folks that are not majors or minors and they just want to keep playing because, because they played in high school. Um, so Miss Shannon here is one of our seniors and she is an informational technology major. She's been taking lessons with me over the last two or three years. She's been in the marching band. She was in the marching band in high school. She's been in the percussion ensemble, I think like five or six semesters dur during her time here. And I like to offer it up to have people kind of, you know, um, play solos as part of the percussion ensemble um, concert. And Shannon's been working on this, this Johann Sebastian Bach. So this is the guy from the 16, 1700s. So this instrument, which is the marimba, did not exist in the 16, 1700s. So this is originally written for cello. It's some of his most played um, works. It's these cello suites, solo cello. And there's something about cello music and violin music that adapts very easily to this instrument. Um, this will be the first time some of you have seen this technique. She's going to be holding two mallets in each hand. So she has a total of four mallets, and we'll talk about the technique a little bit later on. Um, so, so this is Shannon playing the prelude to Bach's cello suite in G major.
I'm going to keep walking around. So, um, Very good. So th we're next going to set up uh, this uh, kind of, it's, it's a real hoop to put these pieces together. This next piece entitled NOLA, it's part of this 1920s xylophone rag era that took place in this country. So the Roaring Twenties, one of the foundational music, styles of music within that era was these uh, piano ragtime pieces that people then adapted um, for other instruments. And it was the xylophone, which is this instrument here, which is like a smaller version of, of this guy. The xylophone um, turned into like a major soloistic instrument. So we would have piano accompaniment with the xylophone players that as the soloist playing all kinds of what we call, you know, ragtime music. And this is what led to jazz, by the way. This is one of the early jazz styles. Um, and then in the 1960s, 1970s, hold on, I'm gonna move them a little bit here. So in the 60s, 70s, people started taking the piano accompaniment and breaking it up into two, three, four marimba parts, literally almost note for note. So what we have going on here is three people on three different marimbas accompanying the solo. This is one of the original solos. This, so the solo part's been around for a very, very long time. The arrangement with the three marimbas is something that's that's some, somewhat new. And here's another example, like I talked about having, having um, Shannon play. So here we have Sadie, who is a sophomore nursing major, who's been, been playing in the percussion ensemble here for the, for the last year or so. And she's been working on this, um, on this piece. Um, and so I, so I wanted to make sure that we added this to the program here. And then back on our makeshift drum set, we have our guest performer for tonight. You're gonna see him later on also. This, so this is Mr. Eric Scatteragia, who is a former percussion major, graduated roughly around 2010, no clue. Um, and then he's been back helping us out over the last academic year, um, part-time kind of teaching some classes. So this is Sadie, featured playing NOLA.
one of the interesting aspects of a, of a concert like this is we keep resetting the stage. So this is gonna take a, just a little bit. So, um, but this piece was premiered this past October, um, written by a gentleman by the name of Gordon Stout, who was my professor in undergrad. I've been fortunate enough, I've kept in touch with him over the years. He's had me back. I, I went to Ithaca College um, in my undergrad days. So he's had me back and done workshops and clinics and master classes and performed with the ensemble up there a handful of time, times. And Gordon is one of the iconic figures in the percussion world with this instrument. So he has written an immense amount of music over the years. He is still very active um, composing today. Um, and this piece, um, he was asked to write by the University of Texas in Austin, um, directed by Tom Burrett, who was a year behind me in undergrad, and I've kept in touch with him over the years. Um, so they premiered it at our, our national percussion convention that happens every year in November. So I believe the information I got from Gordon, I think we are the third group to ever perform this. Um, Temple, the University of Temple has performed it. I believe I'm trying to think of the email he sent me, but I know that they're, they're doing it again at the end of the month because one of the uh, iconic percussionists from the Philadelphia Orchestra passed away um, in the middle of the COVID craziness. So they're doing a celebration of life for him um, at the end of the month. Pardon me for walking around. I got to get my music here. Um, so I heard this at the convention and within five minutes of the concert being finished, I went to Gordon, I said, hey, send it to me. I wanna do this. So this is um, Gordon's take on this or his whole concept behind this piece is um, Tom at Texas wanted a marimba, a marimba piece, just marimbas, and he wanted it to kind of be similar to Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber. And so some of you are familiar with that. It's a very slow, lyrical um, piece of work. So that's what Gordon did. But he also kind of added in dealing with COVID, dealing with all the fighting that's been going on, you know, over the last two, three years with an umpteen, you know, uh, different aspects of it. So you're going to hear some very tonal pretty moments, but then you're gonna hear some contrasting, we, we use the term dissonance, where the notes, the pitches are kind of fighting each other. So it ends happy, or sorry, it starts happy and it ends happy, and, it, and the piece has a rather interesting journey. So this is Lament by Gordon Stout.
So this next piece is a marimba quartet, modern. So look it up. Look at when this was written somewhat recently. Uh, yeah, 2015. And this is a piece that um, the group played, uh, the, the four players, we played this at our annual Taste of the Arts event, which is this great town and gown um, event that takes place. It used to take place downtown, and then we have this cool, spiffy, high-tech arts and administration building that, we're sh that we showed off this spring. So we had the event um, in that building. It was great. It was actually the acoustics in there. We played in this huge atrium, and it's freaking awesome, the acoustics. Um, but we played this piece. These four folks have been getting together on their own quite a bit. Um, this is a situation where, similar to the first piece of the concert, um, we call this like a chamber music piece, meaning there's no conductor. And some of these folks up here are used to, I want to word this the right way, we have this other part of the, the you know, musical ensemble experience that I call the pageantry arts, meaning marching band, drum corps, indoor percussion, indoor color guard, that kind of stuff. So we have a lot of folks come here from experiencing that in high school and this whole nonverbal communication, we call it. So you're gonna see them kind of moving and grooving as they play this. And they're physically moving for a reason not only because they're into the music, but it's so that they can kind of see each other moving at the same time and it helps them play together. And this is ingrained in the brains of these competitive high school groups and drum corps and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the, like I said earlier, these guys have put a ton of time on their own. I've been kind of coaching them a little bit at, as we go here. So this is Seeing the World by Matt more.
Okay. So keep the train moving here. So this next piece, um, Nathan Daughtry, he's another one of the, or Daughtry, I always mispronounce his last name, but he's one of these folks like um, Gottry at the beginning of the concert that I talked about. Um, he writes an absolute ton of, of percussion uh, literature, and this is one of his newer pieces. And um, beginning of the semester when I handed this out, I kind of warned him. I was like, all right, this is the piece for the concert. This is going to be our, I like to use these quirky little terms, this is our slow burn. This thing is going to take a while, and it did. But they, they put in a lot of individual time on their own. Um, this is a little bit of a challenge for us, but it's great for the challenge, um, you know, to have the challenge. But definitely, um, you know, it's come together really well, and it's a very cool piece. It's one of these pieces where it can be just mallet choir. So what we have is three of the marimbas, the three rosewood instruments. Then we've got two vibraphones, these two instruments here, which are metal bars. This is all made out of rosewood. So these two are metal bars, so they have a totally different sound. And the vibraphone, its big home is in the jazz idiom. So for my jazz fans out there, um, you know, if there's a the mallet percussion part that's involved with any big band or jazz quartet or trio, and you see somebody with mallets in their hands, the, the odds are they're playing a vibraphone. So we've got the three marimbas, the two vibes, and then Sadie in the second row here is playing both the xylophone and the glockenspiel or the bells. So we could have just stuck with that because the composer gave us the option. He's like, this could be for six mallet players or here is optional three percussion parts that go along with the six. So we chose to use the three percussion parts. Um, so we've got a total of nine folks uh, on the stage. We're almost about ready. We have our, all of our implements, right? Our, our battle royale stuff. Um, so like I said, this has been one of the, this ongoing throughout the whole semester, putting this together. Fun piece, a lot of variety to it. So Sunward Onward by Nathan Daughtry, and we're just about ready to go here.
So I meant to sprinkle the thank yous throughout the whole program, but of course forgot, so we're going to do them all at the end as we set up for this last piece. So first off, huge thanks to Abby and Reed. Abby's the one that runs the building and her, her whole crew. Um, lighting, the sound, the live stream that's going on. Um, so huge thanks there. Huge thanks to the administration here at the university for continuing to support the arts, which is awesome. Um, let me check my cheat sheet here and see if I forget to mention anything else. Dun, 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 dun. So we have three seniors in the group that this is their last official percussion ensemble concert. So Shannon, who played the Bach cello suite earlier on, so she is graduating, the informational technology, right, and other things, which I wasn't going to remember. And then we have Val, wave Val, so Val's in the back. Um, psychology major, been involved with the drum line her entire stint here, along with percussion ensemble, been taking lessons, lessons with me on and off over the years. And then the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with the cool curly hair that's walking around. So Steven um, is graduating with the audio recording degree here, and I have been teaching at Bloomsburg. I'm just getting my stuff situated here. I've been here for 16 years. Doesn't seem possible. And Stephen ranks among some of the, the top two, easily the top two, of the hardest workers that I've ever had. So this guy, you talk about time management and going the extra mile, he's been completely on top of his you-know-what um, the whole time he's been here. It's been awesome to watch the progress with him in particular. So huge shout out to, uh, to Stephen. Quick background on this piece. It is originally written for solo piano. A bunch of you, you've heard this before. You've heard the piece. You may not have known the name. It's most popular version that has been in movie soundtracks, TV commercials, TV shows is for solo guitar. It's probably one of the most popular solo guitar pieces. I'm a huge fan of solo guitar music. All through undergrad and grad school, I started arranging and transcribing a whole bunch of solo guitar literature, some of it I've had published. Got to Michigan State to do my doctorate, ran into a band director who introduced himself to me, a high school band director said, hey, we put on our own percussion festival in the fall with three different high schools that all get together. And we bring in a, an artist to do clinics and workshops, and then we'd like to have that person perform with us. So he goes, do you have anything that you can play with 50 high school percussionists at the same time? Yeah. So I'm like, instead of saying no, you, you say, well, let me think about it. So what you're going to hear is the solo guitar part. And then I decided, and it went through about eight different versions, um, I decided to arrange this particular piece with percussion ensemble slash percussion choir. Now, when we did this in Michigan, we literally had myself, like nine marimba players, seven vibraphones, five xylophones, ten glocks, and a wall of percussion. So then the following year, I decided to get it published. So this has been published. I've been playing this on and off throughout the, throughout the years. I try to do this piece at least once every four years so that it's like in the cycle as the students come through. You know what I mean? So Leanda, Asturias is another title for it. Again, remember, originally written for piano and then adapted and transcri transcribed the wrong word. Arranged and adapted for solo guitar, played an absolute ton. And it also gets played a lot on the marimba. Like I talked about earlier on, the cello violin stuff fits well. Classical guitar stuff literally falls right into our lap. It's awesome. 
Um, this four mallet technique that you saw Shannon use, I'm going to be using it also, but a different ver a different style to it. Um, so it's a lot of fun. I like to call it marimba rock and roll. We'll see how my hands hold up. I'm getting old. So thanks a ton for coming. I think you're supposed to get a little bit more snow tonight, what I saw, but not as much as last night. So Mother Nature needs to make up her uh, frickin' mind here. Um, thanks a bunch. Those of you that need to see me and you know why they need to see me afterwards, I'll be up in this little zone for the little John Hancock stuff. Okay, so Leanda coming at you.